Hey everyone, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to create a cool hyperspace effect inside of Blender. And this is going to be similar to how we created the abstract wallpaper in my previous tutorial, which looked like a bunch of sparks flying out from the center of the screen. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is switch over from Blender Render Engine to Cycles Render. We're going to delete the lamp. And what we'll be doing is uh, using a bunch of particles to represent stars basically and have them zoom by and sort of blurred to look like we're in hyperspace. And we'll be using this cube as our uh, particle emitter. So first thing we're going to do is scale this up by 5 just so it's bigger. And then I'll scale it up on the y-axis by another 5. And then go to front view, orthographic view, and press Control alt 0 to snap the camera to view. And I'm just going to set the start and end frames of our animation at 1 and 105. Okay? And at the first frame, I just want to position our camera right in front of the cube, like that, and press I to insert a keyframe, and click Location, Rotation, Scale. Now we want to add our particle system. So let's select the cube. And come over to the particle settings and add a new system. We're going to change the number of particles from 1000 to 5000 and then set the end frame to 1 also. We want to switch the lifetime of these particles to just as long as our end frame is or just a little bit longer to make sure that none of them die during our animation. So I just set the lifetime to 106 because my animation is 105 frames long. We also want to switch the emission from faces to volume so that it, the particles are floating inside the cube. And then I'm going to come down to velocity and set the normal to zero and turn off physics. Okay, now I'll come to the second layer and we'll be adding an icosphere and this will be what our particle is. Okay. And I'm just going to add a emission shader to this and open up the node editor. And then I'm going to add a color ramp node because we don't want all of our stars to be the same bright white color. We want to have some variation. So to do that, we're going to add a object info node and plug in the random value. So now if we go to rendered view and duplicate our sphere, you can see that we're getting a lot of random color variation. Not, they're not all the same. So I'm just going to delete those. And I don't want this slider to be completely black because then we'll have some particles that are pure black and they won't be visible. So I'm just going to bring that up to a really dark gray like that. I'm also going to change our background color from gray to black. Okay, We'll come over to the particle system now on the first layer. And under the red render settings, we're going to uncheck emitter. And then I'll uh, switch it from halo to object and select our icosphere. And now if we go to our camera view, you can see all the icospheres here as our particles. But they're way too big. So I'm going to increase the random size to 1, and that'll shrink a lot of them and give it some variation. I'm also going to decrease the size to 0.01. And if we go into rendered view, we can see that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to add some children. So come down here, click simple, and I think those settings are fine. And now I am going to go to the last frame, frame, or actually frame 100. And we're going to move this camera close to the end, but not all the way, like that. And we're going to continue to move this forward until there are no particles inside the view of our camera, like that. Or there's still a small particle there, so zoom out more okay and that's good and then I'll just add a, another keyframe 
So now what will happen is after we uh, render it out from frame 0 or 1 to 100, we'll have all our particles streaking by and it will look like hyperspace. And the last five frames will be pure black. Okay? So now that's looking good. And we're going to want to jump over to the compositor and click Use Nodes Backdrop. And I'll just go to maybe the middle of the animation and quickly render out the picture. Okay, let's go back to the compositor. And I'm going to add a viewer node. And like my previous tutorial with the abstract wallpaper, we'll come down to filter and add directional blur. We'll change the iterations to 5. And if we increase this zoom value, you can see it looks like we're going into hyperspace. And we'll be animating this zoom value. So let's bring up a timeline right here. And at frame 1, we want the zoom to be at 0. And just hovering over this, press I, and it'll insert a keyframe. Then at frame 25, we want this value to be 0.75. Okay, and then we'll insert another keyframe. And then at frame 100, we'll just set this to 1 so that it gradually increases as well. Okay, so I think that's good. And uh, if you want to just do a quick render, you might want to leave the iterations at 5 because otherwise it'll take a longer time to render. But as you can see, if we zoom in, there are a lot of sharp edges here. It's not very smooth. And to fix that, you'll have to increase the iterations. But the more that you increase it, the longer it takes to render. So for my final render, I'll be using 10 iterations. And also what you can do is come down to the samples and switch it from 10 to 1 so it renders our image here really fast. Okay, so I'm just going to render this out really quickly and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, one thing I forgot to do first was make sure that this directional blur node is plugged into the composite node. Otherwise when you render it out, it's going to just render out all the stars without the zoom effect. Okay, so I'll just render this out and come back when it's done. Okay, so our video is finally done rendering, and let's take a look. So that's our hyperspace effect, and it looks pretty good right now, but I'm going to take it one step further and add some color. So let's add a new scene, I'll click Use Nodes, and I'm just going to delete the Render Layer node and add our movie instead. Okay. And then I'm going to add a viewer node as well, and just plug in both of these. And I'm also going to open up our timeline, just so I can set the end frame to 105 frames again. And I'll just make this full screen, and zoom out a bit so we can see what we're working with. Okay, now I'm just going to move it to about frame 50, just so that we can see the zoom effect clearly. And what we want to do is add a mix node, switch it to add, and plug in the original image. We can bring it up to 2 so that it increases the brightness of our scene. And I'll just duplicate the add node, switch it to multiply, set the factor back to 1, and we'll add a RGB node this time so that we can change our hyperspace lines to any color we want. I'm going to pick a nice blue color like that. And I'm just going to add a RGB curve so we can tweak the color some more. I'll bring down the red, increase the green, and increase the blue some more like that. And that's looking pretty good for me. Now I'll add a color ramp node and plug in the output from our first add node. And what I want to do is create some contrast so we can get some nice highlights on our streaks. Okay. 
So that's looking good, I think. Just duplicate our multiply node, switch it to add, and plug in our colored one. Okay, and then you can just play around with these sliders to get an effect that you like. Okay, I might bring down this white color to something like that. And this blue looks a little too strong, so I might bring that down. Or bring it up, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Okay. And now all we have to do is plug this into the composite node and render it out again. And also, if you think that it's a little too sharp still, you can always add a blur node. Oops, filter blur. Switch it to fast Gaussian, relative, and then change it to 0.5 by 0.5. Oh, that's a little too strong. 0.2 by 0.2 maybe. And that'll just uh, blur out the edges a little bit so that it's a little softer. Okay, so that's looking good. And now I'll just render out this uh, animation. So I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so that rendered pretty quickly, and let's take a look. And here you have it, our hyperspace effects made entirely in Blender. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.